Greetings and welcome back to another edition of the End Time Watchman. And the title of the program today is When You Least Expected. When something happens just when you least expect it to, it will most likely catch you unprepared for it. This is what we also call a surprise, whether it is a pleasant surprise or an unpleasant one. A pleasant surprise is like when someone purchases you a very nice gift, something you've always wanted. An unpleasant surprise, on the other hand, could be when you are driving along the road obeying all tra traffic laws and a drunk driver comes out of nowhere and smashes into your vehicle. The fact is that no one likes unpleasant surprises. They cause griefs, pains, uncertainty, heartaches and such like. If we could completely avoid unpleasant surprises, we all would. However, the Bible talks about an upcoming event that is going to take everyone in this world by surprise because no one uh, would be expecting it at that particular moment. But this event will be a pleasant surprise for a few and an unpleasant surprise for the many others. The one thing we know for sure is that this event will happen and happen soon. We call this event the rapture. For those of you who do not know what the rapture is, as this word itself is not specifically uh, in the Bible, but was described, the rapture is when Jesus calls up or snatches away all true believers from out of this world, leaving everyone else behind. This event proceeds the actual second coming of Jesus Christ. So why the big surprise then? Wouldn't it be best to just let the world know exactly when the rapture is? The Holy Spirit revealed to me that if the timing of the rapture was given, surprisingly even fewer people would be ready. Why? Because more people will not believe because it would be in their mind be too good to be true and those who do believe will decide to use the time before to enjoy the world and then get ready in the final moments therefore they would not have been witnessing and winning souls for the kingdom so only a mere handful would probably be ready for the rapture if its timing was made known. So God in his wisdom decided to keep this information to himself for our benefit. However, although no one knows the day or hour the rapture will happen, Jesus is telling us that we can be ready for it simply by being ready all the time. So when it happens, whenever it happens, he will find you ready and take you up to heaven. But to be ready means that we cannot follow the crowd. Instead, we have to be willing to take a stand for Jesus and to be set apart from the masses. While everyone else is running around doing their own thing, ignoring the current signs and trying to get the most of out of this world your eyes should be looking up as jesus already instructed and you should be doing the work of him who sent you in this world in the first place jesus warns us that if we allow ourselves to be drawn by the crowd the rapture will be an unpleasant surprise for you the passage of scripture from the book of Matthew 24 describes what it will be like preceding the rapture and not the second coming 
of Jesus Christ. Jesus explains in other scriptures that his second coming is not a twinkling of an eye uh, happening and therefore not a surprise. He said that every eye will see him when he comes on the clouds with great power and glory. But concerning the rapture which comes before his second coming, this is what Jesus said it will be like. Matthew 24 verses 37 to 41 and verse 44. When the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time Noah entered his boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. That is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. Two men will be working together in the field one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding flour at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. You also must be ready all the time. For the Son of Man will come when least expected. So do not let the unexpected timing of the rapture catch you unprepared. But be ready and prepared all the time like the five virgins in Matthew 25, 1-13. Take your eyes off the world and set your gaze fully on Jesus from now on. If you are watching or listening and you know that you need to ready yourself, do it now before it's too late. Come and surrender all to Jesus today and make your call and election sure. If you're ready to make that all important decision right now, stay tuned for the next few minutes as I explain a bit more about receiving salvation in a pre-recorded clip. At the end of it, you will be given the opportunity to say a short prayer of repentance with me, one that will lead you to receiving salvation in Jesus Christ. Stay tuned. Before I go, I would like to share with you the good news. The good news that you can be saved today from eternal destruction and given eternal life through Jesus Christ. He himself already paid the the high and necessary price uh, for our salvation. So all we need to do is to ask him for it and accept it as a free gift. Why do I need salvation, you may ask? The simple answer is because we are all sinners. We were born and shaped in sin. Romans chapter 3 verses 10 it tells us, as the scriptures say, no one is righteous, not even one. And Romans chapter 3 verse 23 tells us why. It says, for everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. So left to us, we would all perish. But Romans chapter 5 verses 8 tells us, But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. So because of Jesus and what he did, we have the hope of salvation packaged as a free gift for each and every one of us. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. No, that's good news. So, next question, what can I do to be saved? Acts chapter 16 verse 31 says, 
Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 to 10 says, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Will it work for you? Will it work for anybody? Yes. That is why it says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone, no one is exempted. So if you would like to make that all-important decision today for Jesus, I will help you with a short prayer of repentance. If you would like to say this prayer, just repeat it after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am sorry for all of my sins against you. Please have mercy on me. Save me and free me from my sins. Come into my heart along with your Holy Spirit. Wash me and make me whole. Thank you for saving me. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have said that prayer, welcome into the family of God. Continue to seek after God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your body and soul. And please feel free to, to share this video with your friends, uh, uh, with your family. Uh, share it as far and wide as you possibly can. There are no uh, restrictions, absolutely no restrictions on how uh, you can share any of our videos. All we ask is that you help us to reach the loss at all costs. So thank you for watching and thank you for listening. And I'll see you next time, if there is a next time. God wish you bless you and goodbye. Hey, boy, something, something known. Yeah, the father said, oh, yeah, it's coming. Don't get left behind. Don't get left behind. Oh, the rat, yeah, it's coming. Don't get left behind. Don't get left behind.